Apologetics Press did a very good job in describing uh, the various Archaeopteryx specimens. The Archaeopteryx was wingspan about a foot and a half across. He was about a foot long from tail to beak, weighed 11 to 18 ounces. And there have been seven specimens found. So here are those seven specimens after the feather. First of all, there was the feather. Now look very closely at that feather. The vein and the feather barbules are asymmetrical. Now that's very important. That's a strange word, but that means it's off-center. They're not perfectly balanced because for flight, whether uh, feathers, it's necessary for flight for feathers to be asymmetrical. You have the leading edge and then you have the edge, the vein on the right, and this produces an aerodynamic airfoil like an airplane to actually help raise the creature in the air. And this feather is not a developing fringe, not a frayed bit of skin of a dinosaur. It is as complicated as a bird feather today. And there's no way that could have evolved. It simply had to be created in place. The London specimen is quite nice, but the head, part of the head is missing. The Berlin specimen is the most famous of all, and that's what we have a copy of. And uh, that is supposed to be the most important fossil specimen in the world. The Maxburg specimen is not quite as good as the others, not nearly as complete. It's all right. Harleem Taylor specimen, broken, important, because they substantiate that there was a creature. Archaeopteryx was there. Ancient wing, uh, he lived before the flood and possibly a while after the flood. For them, that's ancient terminology, but that flood only occurred 4,500 years ago. Uh, but a real creature was there, there's no question. Uh, then we have this one that's almost complete, the Ekstat specimen. The Solenhofen specimen, uh, you notice the extensions, the tail not quite as long. Notice the halix permitting him to perch and you have the claws on the wings. Solenhofen aiken varium specimen. So the difference in these similarities, Archaeopteryx and modern birds have feathers, facula or wishbone, fucula or wishbone, a furcula, uh, hollow bones, pectoral girdle, pelvic section, very similar. Differences is Archaeopteryx had teeth in his jaw, had a long bony tail, had three claws on each wing, had aboriginal ribs, flat sternum, and by the way, this has those ribs as well, less fusion of hand bones and small cranium. His head was smaller. So let's see what's really going on. Is he missing link or a true bird? He has these features. But now, leading evolutionary paleontologist and archaeologist recognize that in order to produce this creature, you have to combine other creatures. And one scientist, evolutionary scientist, suggested uh, that Archaeopteryx came from a crocodile. But then he finally had to admit there is no relationship and that is an unsubstantiated idea. So that's the illustration of what might have looked like. Many scientists point out things like an opposable helix, the big toe, the furcula, the wishbone, which is formed by two clavicles that have fused in the midline, and an elongated pubis in the pelvic area directed backwards, and see nothing but a bird. He's simply a bird. Alan uh, Fiducia, one of the world's leading scholars on birds, said paleontologists have tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur, but it's not. It's a bird, a perching bird, and no amount of paleobabble is going to change that. And even though he's an evolutionist, he admitted it's simply a bird. You'd, he's not developing uh, from a dinosaur. It's simply wishful thinking, and that's what uh, this other scholar said. Others said he has, uh, this is Gould, uh, Stephen Jay Gould and Niles Eldridge, uh, strange characteristics, but he's totally bird. He's not a reptile at all.